we report a case of endoscopic salvage of a large esophageal digenostomy dehiscence. The authors have no pertinent disclosures. Our patient is a 34-year-old Caucasian female with invasive diffuse gastric adenocarcinoma. She underwent total gastrectomy with emblox splenectomy, distal esophagectomy, subtotal pancreatectomy, and intraoperative percutaneous regenal tube placement. The figure shows esophageal digenostomy anastomosis with ruin wire reconstruction. Seven days postoperatively, she developed septic shock, empyema, and tension pneumothorax, resulting in placement of chest tubes. At this point, radiologic imaging, including CT scan of the abdomen, did not reveal a clear etiology. However, anastomosis leak was suspected, and upper endoscopy showed greater than 50% circumferential dehiscence of esophageal jejunostomy anastomosis, as shown in the image. Here we can see an endoscopic view of the pleural cavity through the dehiscence. And lavage of the pleural cavity was done with total 500 cc of 1.5% hydrogen peroxide and normal saline with scant indigo carmine. This was followed by placement of a fully covered metal stent 18 mm x 150 mm in size as a bridge for surgery. Soft tipped guide wire was used during stent placement, and we preferred to clip the stent to the esophageal wall to prevent migration. Clipping was possible given that an adequate fold was obtained, with sufficient grasp of tissue and stent, allowing for a fixation. Suturing can help to obviate migration, but still can occur with sutures due to metal scaffold cutting into the thread. Furthermore, the use of clips is cheaper than the endoscopic suturing kit. On two-week follow-up, endoscopy showed that the stent was intact in place. However, four weeks later, our patient was still dependent on a chest tube and esophagram showed persistent leak at the anastomosis, even though the stent was in place, as we can see in the images. A multidisciplinary team, including the patient and her family's consensus, was to attempt endoscopic closure of esophageal jejunostomy anastomosis dehiscence instead of surgery. At subsequent endoscopy, the old stent was removed and dehiscence was evaluated. The endoscope passed easily into the pleural cavity, visualizing the chest tube. Lavage of the pleural cavity was repeated using a total of 500 cc of 1.5% hydrogen peroxide and normal saline with scant indigo carmen. However, it was also used to observe the changing color of the chest tube output and determine if this cavity was actively being drained. The surface of the anastomosis dehiscence was debrided to enhance success. Here we present the procedure of flexible over-the-scope endoscopic suturing in our patient with esophageal digenostomy anastomosis dehiscence. The graphic illustration shows a helix device which is used to core screw into the esophageal wall for tissue retraction and placement of full thickness sutures. The proximal loop of the jejunum was approximated towards the distal tip of the esophagus as the tissue anchor drove the suture material through the jejunal and the esophageal walls. The suture arm, which moves in an arc like manner, and the tissue anchor attaches to the tissue arm and serves to drive the suture material through the tissue when suturing. A total of seven interrupted endoscopic sutures were placed to completely close the dehiscence. Here we can see another suture being placed. The anastomosis site was evaluated multiple times to assess the need for further endoscopic suturing.
Here we can see the tissue anchor driving the suture material through the tissue. And here the endoscopic suturing procedure was completed. A soft tip guide wire was used during stent placement. And then a new fully covered metal stent of the same size was deployed traversing the anastomosis. In suspicion of an area of narrowing distal to the anastomosis that could create a back pressure leak. To prevent stent migration, it was clipped to the esophageal wall as previously described. Patient improved clinically and the chest tube was removed in one week. One month later, no leak was seen on esophagram. The stent was removed endoscopically showing an intact anastomosis site without dehiscence. And at six month follow up, she had no upper GI symptoms and the anastomosis site was intact. Esophageal endoscopic suturing was described in animal models for defects up to 2.5 cm in size and in one human case with esophageal defect up to 2 cm. Endoscopic suturing of large esophageal defects is uncommon and the clinical experience has been limited though evolving. Our success at closing a 4 cm esophageal jejunostomy anastomosis dehiscence with significant clinical improvement on long-term follow-up supports the use of endoscopic therapy in selected cases with larger defects. We provide important evidence that management of esophageal full thickness wounds using the combination of endoscopic suturing and stenting is possible, relatively quick and safe when done in experienced centers.